son of a gun, another mystery brews. If you're a small cabinet shop or even a single person woodworking shop, you know there's cabinetry software out there that's pretty expensive. And let's face it, woodworking isn't the least expensive hobby or profession that there is. And creating a cut list, it's tedious and can be time consuming. And since I'm a retired guy, I created a couple apps that help me export all my parts and create cut lists in a matter of minutes. And you can get the apps for free on my website. Let me show you in Fusion 360 how I create my cut list. And Fusion 360 can be free to some people. You'll hear why my creative director says this voice is the younger version of me from 10 to 15 years ago. Hmm. Apparently that's what I used to sound like. Now I'm going to start in Fusion. And I do use the paid version, but I used the free version for years and haven't noticed any difference. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file and I'm going to give it the job name. It's going to be the Joneses because everybody knows a Jones, right? Enough of that guy. Before I enter anything into the job, I go to the individual cabinet and I adjust any parameters in the individual file. We do this at the individual file level, especially if we want to create different sizes of the same cabinet. You'll notice that my function parameter button isn't available until I close my side panel. It's also accessible at the bottom of the modify menu. Let's go ahead and make this a 40 inch wide cabinet. Now we can close this out and save it. Now we have this design saved. We're going to go ahead and open the side panel, highlight the cabinet, and put it in the current design. Positioning of the cabinet in the design isn't critical. I just put it in a location where I can see it and see all the cabinets and any parts that need to be visible or non-visible. Visibility of the body or the part is what's going to be critical when making our export list. It's important to break the link for a couple different reasons. If you don't break the link, any changes here that you're going to make will affect the original file and vice versa. Additionally, this allows you to make another copy of the same cabinet and insert it into the current design. Like we're going to do here, and we're just going to change this and make it a 24-inch cabinet. Like before, we'll just go ahead and open the panel, save this file that we just created, and insert this into the current design of the job layout. And again, you can put this cabinet wherever you want. Just nice to be able to see all the cabinets and all the parts. Well, we've got this one in here. Let's go ahead and go back and put in another cabinet. And this time I think we're going to put something in with the face frame. I could change the size here if I wanted and open this file, but we're just going to insert it as it is. Really need to reiterate how important it is that you break the link on each one of these cabinets. Here's the reason why you want to do this at the cabinet level. You can see how many different parameters and how are they're identified multiple ways. If you had five or ten cabinets in here, you'd have a heck of a time changing anything. Now here's where you have to pay attention. In order to export a part or a body, it has to be visible. Now I have most of my bodies arranged in groups. And if you turn off a group, that will make it non-visible. But at the individual level, it still shows visible. And this will still export even though we don't see it. So we don't want these to export, so we have to shut them off here at the individual body level. So if you decide that you want to use my exporter and use your own CAD file, it's important to note that I've labeled every door drawer with the name of face. The exporter filters any part that has the word face in it and just creates a list that you can send to a supplier to make your doors and drawers. It won't export them to a cut list. But if you didn't want to print any doors or drawers, you could just turn them off. Now we're going to go from cabinet to cabinet here and just turn on and off whatever parts or bodies that we want in our cut list. The exporter also identifies rails and styles. Any part with the name rail or style would be assigned as a solid 
and that way it won't affect your plywood sheets. So if you're going to use your own file, make sure that you name your parts accordingly. So we're going to go ahead and turn them on so that I can show you that they do export to the list. Now that we've got everything like we want it, let's go ahead and export this. So you go up to the Create button, and you go down and you should have this file installed, and you'll get this pop-up window. Here you can browse for the folder that you want to put it in, and we've already got this fake file already ready to go, so we'll choose that folder, and then we'll give it a name whenever we want to give it, and let's just give it uh, Jones, since this is the Jones job. Press OK. It's going to tell you what it exported, and it's going to ask if you want to open the folder where it's at, and we were like, yeah, might as well open the folder. That way we can see that it's there, and if we want to inspect it, we can double-click on it and see what parts did get exported. Now, you could stop here if you wanted, but we still have the optimizer to go through. Now, if this doesn't show for you down here on the bottom where it doesn't run, you can go to Utilities, check your add-ons, and the button should be blue, and if it's not, you can turn it off and on from right here, and that will load and unload it, and here we show that it's loaded. Once we know it's loaded, then we go to Create, and then just go down to the bottom of the menu and run it from there. We're done here, so let's close this out, and let's open up the optimizer. When the optimizer first loads, you're going to want to set your cost configuration. Here you can set your price per sheet, and you can set the price per board foot for your solid materials. Don't need to change the curve, that just that's for in the future. Don't worry about it. Once you have this, just push save. And go to the CSV import. That's going to take you, hopefully, to the folder that you have. And you're going to open that up. It's going to show you what cabinets and what parts that it imported. Give it an OK. And press the Generate Cut List. Here we've got all the parts that were exported. We can go to the heading. We can sort by the part, by the cabinet, by the length. We can click it again and it sorts it to a different direction. Go to our face frame stock. You can see here's all our face frame parts. We can go to doors and drawers and you can see here's all our sizes for our door and drawer faces. We have our summary sheet that just tells us the parts and board footage and rough cost. From here we're going to go ahead and export it and it gives it a name but you can give it whatever name you'd like, and we'll export that CSV to that same folder and get a confirmation that it exported. Then we go to PDF, same thing. We'll just use the same name here, and we'll save that to the same folder. Now we're done with the optimizer. We can close that, and then we'll go to the folder where all these files exported to. You can see, let's check the PDF first. There it is, all the parts, face frame stock, and a list of the cabinets to send to your door cabinet guy. If you want to manipulate it in, in an Excel spreadsheet, you can just open it up, and here you can see same parts exported as on the PDF, but here in Excel, you could manipulate it however you choose, depending on your Excel skills. Now, wasn't that fun? Who doesn't like creating cut lists in a matter of minutes? So what do you need for this process? You need Fusion 360, which can be free. My apps, which are also free. And you're going to need a cabinet that's designed in Fusion that you can draw yourself as well. I'm always looking for ways to improve my workflow. If you have any suggestions, put them down in the comments and I'd love to hear from you. So if you like this content, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, what he said. Thanks for watching.